as you see people you know bustling you know with mm -hmm. joy then uh, we go to the bank and uh, get funds you know we it's uh, an organization's account so two or three persons get to the bank we have to withdraw a certain portion that we need to use that time then later on we go subsequently like that we have um, an administrative assistant we have uh, someone working with accounts we have somebody who is working on communication and uh, fundraising we have somebody who is working on projects grants writing as a whole mm -hmm. then we have a uh, Someone who works to, they call it uh, usually is um, a mailman. Mm -hmm. At least the mailman assists me maybe to get my activities on. Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. busy. No, it's so normal. Those are some of the service people. boy. Yes. I think there is something that I will maybe want to share about myself. I am a multi-talented uh, person. I'm yes. a consultant. Mm. And consultant uh, in which domain? In various domains, I know a little bit, even business, that people want to operate businesses, they come to me and I will talk to them. The best that I know about a business. Maybe people want to set up a company, they come to me, I talk, and after this, you know, a fee is given. I'm a conceptual artist, you know, I have these ideas about how certain things can be done, so I will share them with people who can uh, have them materialize. So I do a couple of things to, to make a living. I do farming to keep my own family, agriculture, together mm -hmm. so I do a lot of things to, to be able to so that if we don't have then life still goes on mm -hmm. Give I think at, at a certain point it may be best to maybe distinguish mm -hmm. what type of uh, organization you know is contributing what we just know they are all NGOs NGOs right? yes mm -hmm. I mean like you rightly said you know there are organizations that work that people have it in their, in their handbags suitcases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The organizations that people have it, you know, in their offices. So organizations can contribute a lot if they are genuine, if they are real, if they are truthful, if they are credible. You know, sometimes people think that what makes an organization is funding, but we say what makes an organization instead is the credibility and the capacity. So the organizations that have the credibility and the capacity definitely are bringing a very, making a very big difference towards a growth of a country and a community. Take for instance, Leon. We make sure we try to manage the risk of every project before we, ab we are able to make it materialize in the community. Because take for instance, you want to help a poor community with a granting meal. There are two villages. We say, oh, maybe you have a, a good heart. I donate a granny meal, one granny meal to two villages that speak separate langu languages. Mm -hmm. Somebody will say that it will place it at the, board, at the boundary. At the boundary, it doesn't work. You know, very soon conflicts will come in. I think there was another instance in the north where a borehole was made, you know, far off a certain community, and the people in the village were very angry. No, they were made closer to the community. And the people in the village were very angry because the mothers wanted their daughters to go far each time they have to, you know, fetch for water. So that by going far, you know, they have the chance to, to play. So we try in our best to make sure we know what we're doing, how we're doing it, so that we don't cause more problems in an attempt mm -hmm. to bring good to a people. So um, some of the things you need is you need to have a, maybe a vision a purpose, and you need to get, gather some people together. You people constitute, constitute what is usually called a constituent assembly, mm -hmm. where rules and uh, regulations are laid down. After, of, after you have to take it to maybe a divisional officer, who will then um, you know, require some other documents from the people who were present during the meeting. So that's the procedure, I think, the administrative procedure. Mm -hmm. After that, you're handed an acknowledgement receipt and after several years of operation, you have to hand in uh, some reports to the government. It's after that period that the government again will determine what status, what level, what place to actually position you. Yes, I think we followed all the steps and we met the various procedures. We have something even to do this year. One, to combine uh, maybe a couple of five-year reports get them together and uh, hand them to the government. We have been handing reports every annually to the senior divisional officer for MESOM. 
what, what, what does it take? Yeah, I think there, there, there have been a couple of um, NGO networks and forums. And uh, it has been very disgusting, the results that we got, because it seems as if the people who are organizing such uh, maybe NGO forums, they have their own narrow idea, maybe. They want to spend themselves, you know, all this white and um, let the others in black, so they don't invite every organization. Then even in the networks that are created, some of the people create networks because they want to get projects, organizations that write several projects, they get the projects, and it takes just a simple, you know, council eraser to erase the name of your organization, your address, and uh, another person writes his address. And so there have been this type of conflicts and uh, differences with people whom I believe don't have a call to work for humanity. And most of our reports that we stand at for a couple of years, uh, we, you know, we got no reaction, no questions. But once in a while, we are invited for meetings, you know, maybe to prepare for like a 20 May touchlight procession, we are invited for such meetings by the government. I really love hair, I have so, so much good hair. I want to give God glory to using my hair. And uh, I want even the women to know that they could take good care of their hair and they'll have it like mine too. Late. You know, everything on earth has its own controversies and it depends who is saying what. At times, you give room to the benefit of doubt, like let everybody speak. But I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, and my place is in heaven. I know I'm going to be there. So, whoever says so, I cannot be excluded from heaven for this. I understand you've done. You know, even um, one of the things I, I think that can make a difference is when people are truly who they are, mm -hmm. not being forced to be some other person. You know, if you take a typical example of Cameroon, you know, the people who maybe have been embezzling state funds, you know, they are very welcomed. They dress in suit. You, you, you know, you see this innocent, you see this gentle, but I don't think these people are really gentle. Mm. So I, I feel really at ease like this, just being myself. You know, I don't, I don't uh, sell drugs, I don't smoke, I'm not an alcoholic, so. I have had lots and lots of admiration from passerbys. There are places where, you know, they're almost traffic jam. You know, when I have it loose, mm -hmm. it's really a nice hair. So I have <laughs> so many admirers. And I think even maybe in the days ahead, in the years ahead, I have a company in the U.S. They would like to, you know, maybe use me for the advertisement of that product. <laughs>